Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I'm sitting down to talk with you guys about math and specifically share with you some information that I have learned through the years of using Shorman Mathematics in my homeschool that I think will be extremely beneficial and helpful to those of you who are coming behind me um, with kids that are entering into middle and high school, but even beyond that, even just to have a better understanding of math from an expert like Dr. Shorman. And I wanna thank Shorman Mathematics for partnering with me on today's video. So we're gonna be talking about several different things in this video that I learned when I became a user of Shorman Mathematics in my homeschool. But I will say that these pieces of information, these, um, helpful, helpful, helpful uh, tools and uh, guidelines are not just for Shorman Mathematics and their curriculum. This is for just the overall understanding of mathematics, especially as your kids get older and how to make it as uh, frustration free as possible. So the first thing that is really important to understand that I didn't really understand until we started using Shorman Math and I looked through the FAQ section on their website and just watched my kids uh, utilize their curriculum is that math is a language, okay? Uh, Dr. Shorman talks about this over and over and over in all of the levels of uh, math that they provide from pre-algebra all the way through calculus. Uh, math being a language. A lot of people wrongly interpret math as simply facts, procedures, and that is problematic because math is a language where we build fluency and understanding. And just like learning a new language, the more we use that language, the more we understand that language, we are going to become more fluent. It really is the same thing with reading. So understanding math as a language is essential for proficiency in mathematics and not just rote memorization. So that is something that is really important to understand. Something that I really wanted to share with you guys in this video that I learned about from Shorman Mathematics is something called the the timed method. Now, this is something that is, I think, beneficial across the board, no matter what math curriculum you're using, but Dr. Sherman was the one who introduced this to me, and it was something that I wished I had known um, beforehand, especially for my oldest daughter. Now, this is frustration-free fluency when you utilize the timed method because what happens with mathematics is if you are of the mindset or of the posture of you're gonna sit there until you finish this math, you're gonna sit there until you get these problems right, and your child is sitting there for hours upon hours, they are basically, their brains are tired, they're not working anymore, and you're not making any progress, which is going to lead to frustration, which is going to lead to tears, it's going to lead to gaps in understanding. So Dr. Shorman has right on the website, um, and I encourage you guys to check it out, I'll link it down below, um, what, they, what he recommends as the maximum time limit for the grade level of your child because there is a, a, a developmental um, situation there and we don't want to be exceeding that daily time that their brains can handle because that is when careless mistakes happen. And so they recommend for the sixth grade, for the timed method, um, the maximum amount of time 
spent on a math lesson to be 30 to 45 minutes. I'm looking at notes. Seventh grade is 45 minutes to an hour. Eighth grade, no more than an hour. Um, eighth and ninth grade, no more than an hour. Tenth and eleventh grade, no more than an hour and a half. And uh, twelfth grade, no more than one and a half to two hours. So if your child is coming to Shoreman Math and they are um, starting something new, just keep those time frames in mind. And you might say to yourself, okay, well, what if they don't finish the lesson for that day? That is okay, especially with Shorman Mathematics, because they formulate their curriculum with that in mind. So you will just log out, your work will be saved, and then your child will resume the next day right where they left off. That's why they they formulate the course in the way that they do with the certain number of lessons as well as um, practice exams and exams uh, in order to allow your child to have that freedom and that ability to utilize the timed method so that they're actually learning math as a language, they're understanding the concepts, and they're not getting frustrated because they're developmentally not able to handle much more time, uh, you know, sitting at the computer. Now, of course, I have to give a disclaimer with that. Um, every child is different. Those guidelines are just general. Um, if you have a child with, you know, learning disabilities or other situations, focus issues, you might need to address that differently. But those are just some general guidelines to consider, um, especially if you are coming over and starting uh, Shorman Math for high school with Algebra 1 and Geometry or for middle school with Pre-Algebra. Really across the board, you want to consider um, those maximum time Through the years of sharing my love for Shorman Mathematics in my homeschool, I've received so many questions from you guys on if I think Shorman Math is um, doable and beneficial for a struggling math student. Someone who math doesn't come naturally to, maybe they don't enjoy it, maybe it's a combination of both, and I always give a resounding yes. But something to keep in mind is that the timed method I was just talking about is going to be critical for these students, okay? Um, for struggling math students. They should start with a lower time and work on math five days a week as opposed to the uh, layout of four Shorman lessons and then the quiz for the fifth day. They should instead work five days a week. Now, the first 25 lessons of Shorman math are um, basically a review. They should work on those first for those five days a week. And then after that, go to the minimum of three days a week. So um, that is the recommendation that Shorman has for the struggling math student. And they also will tell you to not require mastery before moving on. And you can read all about that on the FAQ page on Shorman Math, which I will link down in the description box below for you if you want more information on it. Basically, mastery can be discouraging. It takes time to learn a skill and it takes a long period of time. So there's really no sense in holding children back from moving forward. And there's a lot of information and Dr. Shorman um, has that all laid out on why we should not be requiring mastery before moving on to a new math concept. Now on the flip side of that, if you have a gifted student or or a student who math comes more naturally to, they probably, you probably won't need to utilize the time method. Now that is true for me um, with my current students, but thinking back in the past, there were definitely times where, um, with my oldest daughter, where it was just frustrating on both ends, and I wish that I had known about the timed method because that explained a lot. And uh, so I'm grateful for the knowledge now, which is why I want to pass it along to you. But if you have a gifted student, they probably won't need to utilize the timed method because it will kind of naturally just take them that amount of time. Um, and so it's not something that you have to so much worry about if you have a student who, um, you know, doesn't struggle with math. Something else to keep in mind if you are coming over to Shorman Math from another math program, and even if your child has excelled in math with the previous curriculum 
and you're making a switch because they're going into high school or you're making a switch because you want to try something new, whatever the case might be, you will want to know that the first 25 lessons, no matter what um, level of math you've chosen are foundational. And so if the previous course maybe didn't teach those things or didn't teach them in that way, those first 25 lessons may take a child who normally excels in math longer than just one day to complete because you want to make sure that they have those foundational concepts down before moving on in their Shorman math course. So don't be alarmed if you're switching math curriculums and those first 25 lessons, your child saying, I never learned this. That's okay. Um, that's why it is there. And you can utilize the timed method for those first 25 lessons and then they can move on and have the foundation correct because all math curriculums are not created equal they're not all the same and they don't always finish off where a grade level would and then another curriculum pick up right there there's going to be overlap there's going to be differences and so that's important to know too i know a lot of you guys really worry about switching curriculums um, but dr sherman has you covered with those first 25 lessons being foundational for that uh, math program that math level your child is in. So I wanted to touch on this because I think a lot of people do math wrong and I hope that this information was helpful to you. I will link to Shorman Math down below in the description box for you guys if you want to check them out. Um, their pre-algebra course is on sale until the end of May, so you can definitely check that out as well. The links and everything will be down below. And I want to encourage you guys to take the time to go over to Dr. Shorman's website for Shorman Math and read through the FAQ where you can read much more information than I just provided you. This is just the Cliff's Notes version of some things that I think will be very helpful to you if you are coming over to Shorman Math from a different math curriculum or if you're considering switching to Shorman Math because your kids are getting older or if you just have a child who struggles with math. Like I said, these, um, con these guidelines that Dr. Shorman gives will be effective no matter what math curriculum you're using, but obviously especially with Shorman math because of the way that it is structured. I've said it works so well for the struggling math student and it works so well for the gifted math student and that is why I continue to use Shorman math in my homeschool and um, share it with you guys because it's truly such an answer to prayer. Math is a pain point in a lot of people's homeschools and when I found Shorman math for high school, I was so relieved. So I just want to continue to share that with you guys. Please feel free to leave any questions down below regarding Shorman math and I will do my best to get back to you um, or someone from Dr. Shorman's team. They were in the comments of my last video answering you guys and so that's also helpful if you have a specific question. Someone from their team was gracious enough to be replying so I really appreciated that because I obviously can't answer everything. So leave your questions down below. The links to Shorman will be in the description box and um, I hope you found these tips and this information helpful. Please give this a video a thumbs up before you click out of it and I will see you guys in my next video very soon. Bye friends.